The coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 has been around for nearly half a year, during which it has been mutating. Only six months into the pandemic, researchers have found over 200 genetic mutations. One of these mutations is a cause of concern. As of now, over 3,300 genome samples of the virus have been sequenced worldwide, revealing that the virus is indeed going through some extensive mutations. The question that remains is whether these mutations will make the virus more harmful and infectious and whether this will affect the development of the vaccine. After a virus infects a host cell, it begins making millions of copies of itself at incredible speeds. But with this speed comes a problem, errors and genetic mutations in the genome of the virus. SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA virus, and RNA viruses are known to have a less developed mechanism to repair these mutations, which is why these mutations will continue to accumulate as time passes. But unlike other RNA viruses such as influenza virus and human immune deficiency virus HIV, SARS-CoV-2 has enzymes that can repair these mutations to a certain extent which is why it's mutating slower than other RNA viruses. And because of how slow these mutations are progressing, scientists believe that a single vaccine against coronavirus will be sufficient to get rid of it. When a virus mutates, the mutations will either make it more aggressive, less aggressive, or not affect it at all. Mutations that make the virus less harmful or do not affect the virus at all are less likely to remain. They are eventually deleted by natural selection because the virus would not want to waste the energy of the cell in creating mutations that are not helpful. The only mutations that remain are the ones that are beneficial and make the virus even more aggressive. Critical mutations allow the virus to escape the immune system and continue to destroy more cells. Some mutations allow the virus to escape the effects of medications and become more drug resistant while some others allow it to spread more rapidly between people. The coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 mutations can occur anywhere, but the most important part of the virus is the spike protein, which if mutated could delay the development of the vaccine. The spike protein of the virus binds to the ACE2 receptor of the host cell like a lock and a key, allowing it to enter and infect a new cell. Some mutations will make the binding between the spike protein and the ACE2 receptor even stronger, which increases the chances of the virus in entering more host cells. Some other mutations would allow the spike protein to bind to more than one receptor, thus expanding its ability to have more than one route to enter into the cell. And finally, some mutations would allow the spike protein to bind to a completely new receptor on a totally different cell, which leads to new symptoms of the disease as the virus begins targeting new tissues. Luckily for the coronavirus itself, the ACE2 receptor already exists on the surface of different cells, including lung cells, kidney cells, heart cells, insulin-producing cells, and neurons. This allowed the virus to expand its infection into different parts of the body, leading to new symptoms beyond just pneumonia. The new symptoms occur only in some patients, and they include diabetes, strokes, and kidney failure, which have only been reported recently. One of the critical mutations in the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 is called D614G, which was first detected in February and March in some areas but then quickly spread to become a dominant mutation of the virus. In other words, 70% of SARS-CoV-2 viruses that are circulating the world right now carry the D614G mutation. This mutation first appeared in Europe and then spread to North America and Asia until the D614G variant became the dominant variant that's causing infections worldwide. The authors of the original study revealed that this mutation has made the virus more infectious. However, not all scientists agree with these findings. A recent study published in the journal Cell revealed that although the D614G mutation has indeed made the virus more infectious, it's not likely to cause more severe symptoms. In other words, while the virus can now spread more easily from one person to another, it might not cause severe life-threatening symptoms. To this day, most genetic mutations in SARS-CoV-2 appear at most hardly hit countries, 
From around 198 identified mutations, most of them do not benefit the virus. Some are even harmful to the virus. In 2003, the SARS-CoV-1 outbreak mysteriously disappeared. The virus ended up infecting 8,000 people and killing 700 patients in 29 different countries. Why it disappeared quickly remains a mystery. But it is possible that a genetic mutation that was damaging to the virus emerged, causing the outbreak to end quickly. Could this happen to SARS-CoV-2? It is important to mention that a big part of ending the SARS-CoV-1 epidemic was the fact that the virus only became contagious after the symptoms appeared, and the infected patients could effectively isolate themselves. It is still unclear how SARS-CoV-2 will progress and mutate, and how these mutations will affect the vaccine development and treatment. Tracking these mutations can show us which parts of the viral genome do not change so easily and thus direct us to creating a treatment or a vaccine that the virus cannot easily evade by mutating. Nevertheless, currently the virus seems to mutate slowly and not change much from its original form, offering hope for a single vaccine to work against it.